Hi everyone, welcome to today's pre-course information webinar. We'll be talking about digital disruption, uh, digital transformation strategies from the University of Cambridge Judge Business School. Uh, first of all, uh, apart from a hearty welcome to the session, please let us know where you're joining from in the chat box. Um, always quite exciting to see where we have people joining from around the world. I am in actually quite snowy London today. Um, yeah, things are getting wintry, uh, finally. Um, I'm afraid that um, you might have noticed um, Professor Ansari is not with us at the moment. Um, we're not sure if he'll be able to join us um, during the, the session. Unfortunately, yeah, he's stuck at the airport, we believe, and um, yeah, things, <laughs> things out of our control have come into it. So um, yeah, you're here with me, Clark Boyd, and I will be talking you through well, hopefully everything you want to know about this course. There are a couple of purposes really for, for having this session. I mean, of course, we want to present a lot of the, the frequently asked questions that we think you might have at this stage. We want to share what we believe is a very exciting, illuminating and uh, enlightening course. But we also want to make sure you're, you're able to ask your questions. You know? So um, there is a Q&A box at the bottom. So if you, you know, want to ask any questions of me during the session, let me know. And yeah, great to see South Africa, Peru, uh, Ukraine, Sweden, Ukraine as well. So hi, hi everyone. Oh, Jeddah. It's, <laughs> it's one of the fav my favorite bits of this job is getting to speak to so many people around the world and hear about all of your, your experiences. So I, as I say, a, a huge welcome to all of you. Please, let's keep this session as dynamic as possible. I'd love to hear all of your questions and you know, we'll try to answer some preemptively. But, but further, let's, oh, actually, Seattle, a beautiful city. So today's webinar agenda, as we said, this is, it's designed from a lot of the questions that we typically hear at this stage. You know, hopefully the fact that you're joining me today means that you're, you're intrigued about what the course can offer and, yeah, We'll go through these points, but we'll give plenty of time for questions at the end. So a proper introduction to uh, today's speakers or speaker as I am at the moment. A little bit about Cambridge Judge Business School. So you know quite a bit about the, the university, but I'll give a bit more background on, on what it is that we do. Program faculty. So who will you be learning from? If you sign up to this course, who will you learn from directly um, to fantastic academics at Cambridge sharing their, their decades of learning and insights about the programme. So delving into it a little more narrowly, um, what will you get out of this really? What are the learning outcomes that, that we think? That's, it's a personal thing, of course, isn't it? You, you will have career goals, personal goals, and yeah, different learning goals that you have, but there are some broad themes that we can pick up on. Programme highlights. So, into the nitty gritty, I suppose. You know, what, what specifically will you learn if you take this course? And then we'll get to the, the brass tacks of it, uh, admissions and fees and plenty of time for your questions. A big welcome to those who have just joined us. Um, ah, you haven't missed too much of the action yet, so don't, don't worry. Hello, Craig. <laughs> Hi, Pedro. Yeah. Great to have you all with us. So today's speakers, as I said, we're, we're hoping that um, you know, Shaz might be able to join us at some stage, but he has um, yeah, been <laughs> way late, unfortunately, um, yeah, not able to, to join us at the moment. But um, Professor Shaz Ansari has, of course, you know, a huge hand in this course. So pretty much all of the material comes from, from his teachings and his colleague at, um, at Cambridge. He's Professor of Strategy and Innovation at Cambridge Judge Business School, and in fact, did his PhD at Cambridge as well, I believe undergrad and he's been there for um, well, pretty much from the beginning at Cambridge Judge Business School. It's a, a reasonably young business school actually started in about 1990. My name is Clark Boyd so I'm a digital strategy consultant, author, speaker as, as you're, you're hearing right now and um, I'm a course leader with Emeritus. We partner with um, Cambridge Business School to you know, deliver this course online. Fortunately I guess, for the purposes of this session, I did my, my undergrad and my master's at uh, Cambridge University. So I, you know, I know a bit about the faculty and, and what the university does apart from my work on this specific course. So, about Cambridge Judge Business School. Okay, 
beautiful business school um, on Trumpington Street in Cambridge, right in the centre of the city. And what I think is interesting and, and what I love about this course is that we see how the lessons that we're going through in the programme have applied to the business school itself. So a lot of academic institutions, I suppose, can be removed. You know, when we think about business and the dynamic world that's out there, but actually a lot of those lessons have been applied within the school itself. So it's right at the heart of Cambridge University, as I mentioned, uh, it's on the main street in the city, uh, quite close to King's College and, and St. Catharines where, where I went. And um, yeah, since 1990, it's quite a young business school reasonably. Um, it's really forged this reputation as, as a seat of rigorous thinking, high impact from transformative education. It attracts creative thinkers, problem solvers, really diverse people from around the world to come together to, to try and solve some of the pressing business problems that we see today. As I said, now Cambridge is really a seat of, yeah, of course, learning the university itself um, was founded in uh, this will test me, 1209, I believe, um, definitely, definitely 1208 or nine. Uh, it, was, it was around there. So it's over 800 years old. That, of course, brings with it a huge amount of heritage, which you'll be, be familiar with. But um, the business school brings that into really the, you know, the 21st century. Cambridge is a, a, probably the central area for AI research and development. A lot of startups come from that area. And the business school has placed itself at the center of this whole, whole ecosystem that has spanned around it within the Cambridge area. So Silicon Fen, I believe they call it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very exciting place. And you get a sense of that energy and dynamism coming through as well. So it's a really beautiful combination of the, the old heritage, but also the freshest and latest thinking. Program faculty. So you will be joined um, on, on multiple occasions during the course by Professor Shaz Ansari. So as I mentioned, Professor of Strategy and Innovation, and um, he's a professorial fellow of St. Edmund's College. So you may know a little bit about the system in Cambridge. There are about 30 different colleges that make the university. So as Shaz has said many times, it's great because he's not just working at the business school, he also gets to work within the college. So he's learning from linguists and having conversations with scientists uh, at the dinner table pretty much every night. So as I said, he did his master's and his PhD at Cambridge. So you know, very, <laughs> very well versed in what makes the place tick. The other um, professor that you'll be learning from or doctor in this instance is Dr. Kamal Munir. So uh, he's a reader in strategy and policy and uh, one of the, the leading thinkers out there when it comes to um, platform economies and also key thing in this course about disruption. You will have heard so much about disruption that it becomes this buzzword. It's a fantastic way to start this course though. You learn what does that truly mean? How does it apply? What are the different approaches you can take if you are disrupting an old industry? If you feel like you may be disrupted, how can you respond? So learning from, from the best in the business and cutting through the noise, I would say. Um, Kamal, uh, he got his PhD from McGill University in, in Canada and has been at Cambridge for quite a few years now. So you know, really, you know, fantastic people to learn from and they will um, be teaching directly through our learning platform and they'll also join us for live webinars to answer your questions and present their latest research. So the course itself. <laughs> so, hi, I know we have a few um, recent joiners, so hello, welcome everyone. I uh, should say we'll share the slides as well after, so I've only been introducing people at the moment, but uh, yeah, just so you know, you will receive them afterwards. Also, be free to, to use the Q&A box, any questions you might have. I have the support team with me as well, so yeah, anything you want to know, I think we can cover it. So, that's a little bit about the university very broadly, the individuals that you will be learning from and um, you know, conversing with. What do we teach on this course? What do we hope that you'll get out of it? So we have this core kind of driving philosophy of, of how to navigate digital disruptions. That is then broken down into five different areas. So the first is about dealing with disruption. I've just mentioned, so Dr. Munir, present a lot of his research and thoughts on what it means, first of all, to, to disrupt. Yeah, it's not just being novel, it's not just being exciting, it's, it's a very specific concept 
And the better we understand it, the better we can apply it. So we learned about different strategies for, um, and actually we have case studies where you, you consider how you would break into a new market, how you might respond um, if someone were to, to try and disrupt what you're doing. Next bit, and we will talk about platform strategies a lot, but you know, specific module on the challenges associated with platform businesses. So we can think of the likes of Uber and Airbnb and how they, these platforms scale so quickly. But how do they, how do they get that, that, initial, um, that initial supply and demand side, um, I, I suppose, um, level of interest? How do they facilitate the connections between the two sides? Um, all of these quite complex problems we work through together. So how do you deal with those? How can you generate some of those network effects to your benefit? How can you take a traditional business and apply a platform strategy? Some really great examples there of how, you know, in B2B um, examples or really traditional old fashioned industries, yes, you still need to sell a product and that will still be quite a, a pipeline sort of model, but how do you add a platform strategy on top of that? How do you get that, that kind of network effect generated to? Third, business models. So really important part of this course, as you can imagine, is, uh, First of all, identifying what a business model really means. It's, it's not just as straightforward as how you make money. There's, there's more to it than that. How are you creating value, generating value for multiple stakeholders? How can you define a, a, a new business model that takes on board the, the recent trends in how consumers are, are shopping, how they are hoping to interact with the company? How do you make that a, a genuine business model as well? Challenges to adapting. So learning to distinguish um, successful platforms from unsuccessful ones. So how to really cut through a lot of the bluster and look at the numbers and see of whether a platform business is viable or, or not. And we'll look at why some incumbents are unable to adapt to disruption. You've probably, if you're anything like me, seen a lot of you know, LinkedIn posts, people saying uh, disrupt or die and all these sorts of things. But the big businesses that have been disrupted and gone out of business, they're not stupid people. Uh, they do understand their customers to some extent. They do understand their industry probably better than most. So how can a startup put them out of business? You know, these people are researching, they're thinking, they're maybe a little paranoid about where the next threat is coming from. And yet sometimes they still can't respond. What, why is that and what could they have done differently? Finally, ecosystem evolution. Key lesson from the course is about um, moving from industry thinking to ecosystem thinking and, and how you might apply that to yourself. So we'll examine the importance of ecosystems from the perspective of a new entrant. So how can you get those interdependencies within a new ecosystem and the incumbents as well? So it's fine if you're Google or Amazon, they can decide to enter any ecosystem they want. You know, they can start working with health companies and um, Google starts working with Citibank this year. That's fine for them. But what happens if you're in the banking industry and Google enters? What can you do about that? How can you um, develop your own ecosystem to build a bit of a, a moat on your business model? We'll also look at how to predict how ecosystems are likely to evolve. A big challenge that, uh, that people have on this course and that I love working on with people is it's okay us saying move from industry thinking to ecosystem thinking and we'll go into what exactly that means in, in a moment. But industry thinking provides security and certainty. You can analyze the market, you can predict what might happen next. Ecosystems are sometimes a little vague. They are very dynamic, they're very flexible. So how do you apply rigor to that? How do you apply structure when none really seems to be there in a practical way? So really, I suppose the key point to take away from this slide with its, its five key lessons is, the way that we try and teach is to be, be rigorous and to try and get beyond um, a lot of the headlines about these things to apply, um, yes, some rigor, some structure, and some practical applications. Now, how can you take these lessons and apply them to whichever industry it is that you work in? So learning outcomes, I will, um, I'll do this slide and then I'll come back. I see we have a couple of questions, so I'll, I'll make sure I answer those in just a moment. So learning outcomes, as I mentioned, these will probably be quite personal, you know, so you individually will have reasons that you are on this call today. So <laughs> I'm sure there are some themes among those, but you know, we have a diverse group, diverse um, levels of experience, um, places that you've worked, all those things. 
we believe from our perspective, this program will enable you to, and I will read through these because they're important. Number one, distinguish successful platforms from unsuccessful ones, and more broadly, what makes a platform successful? Number two, understand why incumbents are unable to adapt to disruption. As I mentioned, people see the threats coming. They're aware of what's happening in the market. How does the new entrant develop that unfair competitive advantage so that the incumbent simply can't respond? Number three, accurately predict how new ecosystems are likely to evolve and which companies are likely to dominate them. Very subtle power balance within ecosystems and very, very interesting, kind of like a global, almost like foreign policy strategy sometimes looking at how ecosystems evolve. Number four, deal with the challenges associated with platforms and the strategies to deal with them. So you're Airbnb, but how do you govern that platform if you're very hands off? What happens when there are, are problems on there? What happens when people start moving to another platform? How do you deal with those situations? We pin down a range of scenarios and provide essentially a toolkit to help you deal with those situations. Number five, so understand the importance of ecosystems, as I was just talking about quite a bit, and be able to take the perspective of the new entrant and an incumbent. So we work on assignments around this where you, you assume each of those different roles. Number six, and this is how we, we wrap up the course really, understand what a business model is. So we don't spend too much time on that, but important to be concise and clear, and be able to design a business model to create value. So very valuable, I think, uh, learning outcomes that we've desi designed from this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the course in a moment, but I will pause to answer some questions. Oh, really good question. So um, Hossam asks, is this program for digital marketers or for management awareness? Yeah, really good question. Um, I would not pitch it as a, a direct digital marketing program. Um, there are certainly lessons about it, that, uh, lessons within it that would be applicable to digital marketing, but it is more um, from the business strategy perspective. So marketing falls within that, but um, yeah, I, I would say there are, there are other more specific digital marketing courses. This is more kind of from that management business strategy perspective. Um, maybe sitting at a higher level within an organization than digital marketing. So applicable lessons and coming from a digital marketing background you know, a few years ago anyway, uh, these are things I wish I had known when I was, uh, when I was running campaigns, but not a, not a specific marketing course. Natalia asks, so hi, is this course tailored to people with business experience? Um, yes, yeah, so we have an, I have a slide about this a little bit later. We have a really broad um, kind of spectrum of different levels of experience that people have. Um, typically that starts at you know, one to two years experience and goes right up to 40 years plus. And, and we, we very much encourage that because you get a real diversity of thinking within, within that. So we're not necessarily saying 15, 20 years plus, um, but yeah, normally one to two years plus. So pretty pretty broad broad range and you know, from different countries, from different industries and those sorts of things. Uh, so Leroy says, how long are the sessions for each week when the course starts? That's a great question. It's definitely one that I'm going to um, answer. Of course, it varies week to week. I'm going to show you some of the details about that in just a moment. Um, but we you know, tend to have a, a live session with your course leader, which be about 45 to 60 minutes. And we estimate between sort of three to four hours of, of learning, um, I suppose learning time. We have videos, we have assignments and uh, that sort of thing as well. So I believe I have a slide about that in a moment, but yes, thank you for your, your question, Leroy. It's a very important one. So Andy says, when you refer to platforms, is there any material related to technology, especially IT related subject in the course? Well, yes, Andy. So we do have, um, we certainly have case studies and, and things like that about um, IT. What we encourage is, so you, you can work on different both mini projects throughout the course, and we encourage people to work on whichever area interests them most. So we don't really channel or regiment that too much. So 
if you work in IT, you know, if we don't give you a lot of things where you have to pretend you're a hotel, you can apply whatever it is that you'd like to work on. Um, we use examples that we think are broadly applicable. We don't want to focus on one area too much, but um, there are certainly um, IT related um, modules within this and you can bring as much as you want to it because you have course leaders who will work with you directly. So really, um, yeah, that's that's up to you. Um, and another really good question. So do you have case studies that are specific to Africa? So we try not to focus too much on specific um, regions, continents and so on within the course because it's such a global group. But we do have um, a lot of sessions uh, within the course that are defined by what the participants want to see. So some of the material is obviously pre-recorded or it's in PDFs or PowerPoint or whatever, and that's, that's standard. But then there's about 20% that we tailor to what you would like to see more of. So every week we will um, ask you for feedback on what you'd like to see. So if you want to see um, more examples based in Africa, say, we will absolutely do that. Um, when I have live sessions, so it'd be me and Professor Ansari, we tend to talk about, um, yes, the latest developments and, and interesting case studies in, in Africa, in Asia as well, uh, particularly China, but also also India and Indonesia quite a bit as well. So, so yes, we will, but it's not kind of, hard-coded into the course, if you see what I mean. And I'll take one last question at the moment. I'll move on um, to the next section and then come back to them, but um, it's, it's a good question. Uh, will blockchain um, technology be part of the course? I've done the Oxford blockchain strategy program. Is, is this the same? Uh, no, there's, there's very, very minimal overlap between the two. There is um, a little bit of a reference to blockchain technology, but it's not the focus of what we're trying to um, deal with specifically on this course. So you should see very minimal overlap between the two. As you say, blockchain, obviously complex, huge implications. We tend to keep that for its own course and then um, focus on kind of digital disruption and, and transformation strategy within this one. So yeah, thank you very much for your excellent questions. Um, keep them coming. I'll move on for another few slides and then I'll, I'll pop back onto my second screen. Got a whole futuristic setup here. It's, uh, it's high tech for me. So program highlights. Um, really, I suppose trying to get into the, the shoes of, of the participant here, I guess. So you, you sign up for this, this course. What do you get? <laughs> what, what happens? Um, what can you take away from it? Uh, what does your average, uh, average week look like when you're, you're working through this? Well, the program includes a mixture of um, different types of learning. Now, we have run many of these courses. I've been a, a course leader on, on these courses for about coming on three years now, actually. And we've you know, tested and learned a lot. That's, we have to practice what we preach, don't we? And we find that this blended approach to learning works particularly well for executive education. Um, we appreciate that participants have busy lives, often you know, stressful careers, home lives, you know, lots going on and you're carving out the time to take this, this course for you know, a range of different reasons, but we need to kind of fit into that, that life. You know, we need to fit into how you, you, you're currently living and how you want to learn this, this material. So there are video lectures, typically quite short, between you know, five to 10 minutes, touching on one specific theme. There are um, projects that you can work on, we find, especially adult learning helps to kind of meet the university halfway, you know, rather than us just lecturing, getting your, your hands into it and, and turning theory to practice is a great way to learn. There are quizzes and assignments and you know, little knowledge checks within there to make sure you're comfortable with everything. Live Q&A sessions, really, really important to us. So keeping it quite dynamic and um, we have one every week. It's, it's optional to attend, of course, and there are recordings shared afterwards. So yeah, if you can't make it, then you can watch after. We have live webinars, so on specific um, specific topics, we go into a bit more detail. A bit of peer-to-peer -peer learning. So uh, when I when I teach this course in in particular, it's true of all of them, but but really of this one, um, the 
level of insight and the application from participants is so impressive. You know, the, the ideas that people come up with, the conversations that they have, really, really fantastic and, and illuminating and, and stimulating. So we want to make sure you benefit from how fantastic your fellow participants are on this course. So there is some peer-to-peer -peer learning where you can you know, see other people's assignments, join the discussion about them, and I suppose help each other to learn from, from different backgrounds and experiences. We have moderated discussion boards. So um, yeah, typically I'll be in there, um, you know, joining conversations and keeping things moving along. And mobile learning, of course. You know, you're, you're on the go. <laughs> you want to be able to access this material um, at your leisure. Now, we expect participants to dedicate between four and six hours per week over the 10 weeks of the program. And as I mentioned, we're very cognizant and respectful of the fact that some weeks that's more challenging than others you know, to find that time. So we are um, very flexible in tailoring what the deadlines might look like based on you know, something comes up, a busy week, you're traveling a lot or you're in a country where it's hard. It's hard to get the, the online access you need on the go. So whatever happens, you can get in touch with your course leader and we'll work with you. you know, we want to guide you through this course as best we can, but we estimate between four and six hours per week. And the program, as we've mentioned, is organized, organized around four different areas of digital disruption. I will talk about those <laughs> right now. Uh, Number one, as I said, dealing with disruption. Now, these are the specific modules that you will take on this course. So dealing with disruption, um, Dr. Munir talking about classic examples, I guess, but, but giving a, a new light to the likes of, of Kodak, what, what really happened with, with them. How, how did they manage to fall behind after being so innovative for so long? Next, the incumbents dilemma. So, um, Classic term you may have seen from, from um, Kate and Christensen's writings in the, the 90s about the, the innovator's dilemma. We're talking about you know, the, how the incumbent can, can deal with a threat. Um, how, do you, um, how do you know when to invest in something that might be quite risky? You know, a startup can take those risks because the gains are so high. But if you're already a huge company, you're a massive bank. How can you assess the opportunity that a new trend, a new technology, a new consumer attitude might give to your business when the potential rewards are, are quite intangible, but you know they could be huge? How do you deal with that? Changing competitive imperatives, a running thread through this course actually about um, the fact that it's, it's not about static competition. You, know, you, you don't have your classic competitors alongside you. And, even in industries where you do, you may have noticed that changing where other people start to move in a little bit. Technology enables people to do a lot more without having the, the kind of hard infrastructure that they needed before. Platform-based competition and, and building on that with platform wars in module five. Looking at different starting points and, and I suppose ending points. If you are a platform, how do you maintain your advantage? If you're a new platform, how do you tackle a, a bigger platform when we, we say network effects? So for example, Facebook, what's, what's the huge benefit of it? Well, everyone's on there. Maybe not quite so much these days, uh, maybe moves a little bit towards Instagram, but you know, still in the Facebook ecosystem. If you're a new social network, you could have better technology, you could have a nicer interface, but how do you get everybody to move from one platform to the other. And what are the, the incentives? How can you convince people to do that? So we take a good look at that in module five. Module six, uh, winning ecosystems. Uh, we will have talked about ecosystems already, but really pinning that down. And how do you enter a new ecosystem? How do you create different dependencies between yourself? How do you partner with similar companies that are you know, asymmetric competitors? Not direct, but they compete in some areas. And we'll work on a great assignment there about um, a gymnasium. You know, how would you start from nothing and build a brand new ecosystem around that? The final two modules, so business model innovation with plenty of case studies in there. It's an important one, so we take two weeks and that will be with um, Professor Ansari. So it's intensive, as you can see. We try and keep it you know, neat, neatly focused on topics so that we can go into to proper depth with them. But 
running the full gamut of what digital disruption means today and how you can how you can make it work for you. I suppose that's the key question you're you're maybe asking. What, what's kind of in it for me? What, if I take this course, what do I get? How can I be better at my job, move to a new role, get into a new industry? We've designed these these eight modules with precisely that in mind. So, the learning experience. A, a little bit of a, a recap. Uh, yeah, yeah. As Charles says, uh, actually, currently at an airport in Lima. So yeah, mobile learning. <laughs> Proving my point. Thanks a lot, Charles. Uh, yeah, I was in Lima not that long ago doing a talk, actually. It's a beautiful place. So the learning experience. We're not here to hear about my travels, unfortunately, but you know, maybe a future webinar. Orientation. Now, we have our own learning platform that you'll, you'll get access to. It has everything on there. The first week, um, yeah, as you would expect, a bit of a gentle introduction. We, we introduce you to the other participants in the class. We'll have a, a webinar where we you know, just give a hands-on demo of how the whole platform works, answer your questions, um, any of the learning tools on there that you'll need. Make sure you're comfortable with everything. So you know, week one, a bit of, bit of hand-holding, as you might expect. Now, in the other weeks, as you can see in point two here, you have learning goals set for the week. Now, that will range from watching the videos, which are you know, very nice and easily digestible, and completing your assignments. There are weekly deadlines for those. My advice is um, yeah, if you're ever struggling with one of those, deadlines tend to be hard, tend to be challenging and that sort of thing. Just get in touch with us if you're, you're struggling a little bit for whatever reason. We can, we can be flexible with that as well. But we try and keep everyone on the same pace if we can. So yes, video lectures recorded um, in Cambridge, actually with the program faculty, live webinars. So you'll have um, four live webinars with Professor Ansari and Dr. Munir. We appreciate, of course, that we have a global group. It can be difficult to find a time that suits everybody equally. We find that we can capture most people if we do it between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. UTC on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Now, the sessions are recorded. They will be shared with you straight after. You can also submit questions in advance. So if you know, you've got a burning question you want to ask one of the professors, we can, um, yeah, we can ask that question and you'll, you'll get a response. So um, Q&A sessions. Um, your course leaders will have Q&A sessions every week uh, to help you. Um, in fact, yeah, we've, we've actually made it every week now because um, well, they seem to go down well. People, <laughs> people like having the opportunity. And it's just a chance to have an open dialogue. So um, a, a, a group chat, I guess. How are you finding the experience? Um, any concepts that you're, you're uh, maybe not so clear on? If you'd like further examples, for example, in um, say in Africa, a digital transformation in a specific industry, we can prepare something to, to discuss with you. Follow up. So as I said, we, we do like to uh, get people as much as we can through the course. And you know, I think it's really important. So the program support team will follow up through um, emails or if needed, phone calls, um, if you're unable to submit and just figure out what's, what's going on. We, we want to make sure if you sign up that you're getting the full value out of this. And a big benefit, and I hope you'll agree when you see the quality of the contents on this course, you will continue to have access to program videos and learning material for up to 12 months from the program start date. You'll also be able to um, see the, the assignments and the conversations that you've had with your, your co-participants. So yeah, a, a really big benefit there. We want to make sure you get extended access. So. A little bit about some of the case studies that we will have, and then I'll, I'll come back. I see we have a few more questions coming in. Um, please do you know, keep firing them at me because um, we'll take lots of time at the end to answer everything. So case studies, we will look at um, Dell, first of all. So learning how the, the technology company that you're pretty familiar with uh, disrupted the PC industry um, by cutting out the middlemen going directly to the end user. Now, I think when, when you look at some of these case studies, what you might think, first of all, is that you know, these are really clear and big and obvious um, brands to choose. And what we're trying to do by that, you know, that's, that's a purposeful and conscious decision. 
we're trying to provide universal principles through a recognizable um, big brand, someone that's done something that, um, yes, is, is an example that others could potentially follow, but something that reveals something about the underlying mental and business models that um, can be applied elsewhere. This is a really, really important bit for us is that, yes, it's interesting. It's fascinating to learn about what you know, really happened with, with Dell. And of course, our, our professors know a lot about the, the inner workings of some of those situations and you know, happy to reveal all. But then we want to make sure you can apply that. So that's where you know, we as course leaders need to help you. Okay, that worked for Dell, but what does it mean for my, my industry? We're a very different company in a different area. And, and we've chosen these because we think they are universally applicable. Second, and quite timely, we have, we have some content around Netflix and Disney Plus and that sort of thing. A benefit of this being such a new course is that we're, we're very up to date. Uh, we'll look at how it took on Blockbuster and now we're going to look and then we're going to take it a step further as well. So how did it enter the market and how does it deal with its new position? You know, it is the incumbent now. It has written the rules uh, of a new game and now you've got people coming in like Disney Plus with huge resources. You've got Apple entering that space as well. So we have a discussion and an assignment around that. And I never thought I would say this because, you know, Ryanair is not, not always a popular airline, you know, not, not, not the greatest experience out there. Uh, this is actually my favorite case study in, in this. So we look at how um, Ryanair's very deliberate strategy and no frills business model, which you'll be familiar with if you've flown with them, upended the budget airline industry, increased the size of the market and positioned the company for success. Um, it's really, really fascinating uh, when you, you see how much thought went into their approach and how sound it was from a business strategy perspective, the way they went into the market. We talk about having that unfair competitive advantage, and that's really what they had. They went in at the low end, and people couldn't come down to meet them because they would have to sacrifice too much to do it. So really, really interesting. Um, never thought they'd be my favorite in any category. But, a big favorite case study and just a few more, but we do have others within the course, I, sh I should say, and they're all quite detailed. And Kodak is, is a fantastic one as well, because we mention someone like Kodak and we all know a little bit about them and, and we, we can quite easily say how they missed the boat with certain um, digital trends. But we go further back than that as well and, and look at their heritage as an innovator and, and how they, they generated new ideas that people just hadn't really thought of. You know, Kodak looking at um, photo albums and putting those in their advertising strategy because, well, <laughs> you get a photo album, you need to take more photos, you'll need more film. You know, they're quite nuanced thinking about things. So they were a, an, an original disruptor, but then they were you know, disrupted by the shift to digital imaging. In fact, they had a team in Brazil that in the 90s was working on essentially what we would now know as Instagram. <laughs> it was photo sharing in that way, allowing you to filter photos, but they, they just didn't think there was a market for it yet. It was almost too early, um, actually. The consumer demand wasn't there yet for something like that. It, it didn't look like Instagram. It wasn't quite as glossy, but the concept was very similar. They weren't not thinking about these things. So TiVo, a new entrant that broke into the whole kind of cable, um, yeah, set-top box industry, um, but then also look at the, the mistakes they've made and, and the strategies that they, they use to try and remedy them. Some successful, some less so, but you know, a huge amount to learn from them. And eHarmony, uh, another, another great or fascinating company, Look at how this matchmaking platform, in every sense of the word of matchmaking, uh, found success in a challenging market. You know, trying to figure out how to use um, data, how to find the, the right trade-offs between trying to get the right people um, within their platform, and effectively governing that. Huge, huge challenge for them. So that's towards the end of the course. We look at them, and we have an assignment about eHarmony as well. So some of the assignments, what will you be getting your, your hands dirty with, so to speak? Streaming services I just mentioned there. So um, who will win the streaming wars? 
Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney, Apple, of course, is well now. Who will win? Who will lose? Will there be a new entrant that comes in? Is there simply room for a lot more people in the market? You know, it's, it's growing all the time. Maybe there's room for all of them to, to play there, so to speak. Design a new business model. So you will um, be looking at yeah, designing your own based on what you've learned through the course towards the end. And then of course, we'll provide feedback on, on that too. Connected car exercise. This one is superb. So you'll be assigned a different role within companies. So BMW, Tesla, Alphabet, Intel, Aston Martin, different kind of players, different heritage, different ideas. And uh, you're essentially pitching to your board for investment. You, you're in 2025 and uh, what do you think you need to, to invest in to keep up, to take over the, the competition? Really, uh, I, I love looking at the, the assignment responses we get there. Some, some very um, innovative thinking tends to come up. And yes, yeah, so Netflix versus Disney will look specifically at what makes a platform successful and we'll have a discussion about um, well, Disney Plus's strategy and, and how that's been faring you know, due to launch quite soon in the UK as well. So we'll get to see it over here. And you complete the course, you're, you pass your assignments and uh, yeah, you get this beautiful certificate from the University of Cambridge. Um, yeah, we will send out a, a hard copy of the certificate and you'll get, um, well, you get a smart certificate, I should say, not just an e-certificate. So you can um, upload that to LinkedIn. So yeah, a nice reward for 10 weeks of, of hard, but hopefully quite enjoyable and rewarding learning. So I'll come back and look at a few of your questions. Um, Andy, so any references from Cambridge is accessible to us. Uh, it depends on what you mean by references. So they will certainly, um, you know, we will provide things like a, a reading list and all that sort of thing that I'll work on with the, the professors. Um, so you will get access to that. But I hope, I hope that's what you mean by references. Um, <laughs> we've got plenty of time, so please feel free to, to add further detail. And um, Juan, uh, so is there any part of the course to understand how to spot the opportunity to create an ecosystem? So, you know, how would you identify um, that there is an opportunity for you in whatever area you are to create a new ecosystem, to be at the heart of it? Um, yes, I'm spending so long on the question because I've got a, a good answer on that one. Yes, absolutely. So that's actually one of the assignments is about you know, assessing the market and what I find really important is truly being at the center of that ecosystem versus believing that you are. So a lot of the complexity of ecosystems kind of, you know, if, for example, if we were to draw um, a picture of how we envision the world, you know, look at the globe, for example, people, people have set lines based on where they are, you know, <laughs> we're the center, whoever, uh, whoever is creating these things gets the right, I suppose, and it's human nature to place yourself at the center. We do that with ecosystems as well. Every company I've worked at, if they're looking at you know, our ecosystem, put themselves at the center and work out from there. How do you genuinely do that? How do you know if there's an opportunity? Yes, we will be looking at that and working on it together, actually. Um, yeah, I've asked, so can we come to the actual lecture if we are in Cambridge? So no, there's a, a combination of content in the course. Um, first, it's pre-recorded lectures at the university, so obviously they're already done. The live webinars will be um, normally, so Shaz and, and Kamal will join from their office in Cambridge, so it's not really kind of in a lecture hall, they'll just be you know, joining from, from their webcam in the faculty. So um, no, there aren't any, any lectures in it to, to attend, I suppose, but um, yeah, it would be nice. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's not the way that it's, it's set up. Eric asks, so is there any content in the course in the health area? So again, now we do talk about health. The, the thing is, there's so much to it that you could have a whole course that's just about digital disruption and health. And that's you know, not, not what this is designed for. So there are examples based on the health industry. And then it's kind of, I suppose, up to you to develop that further. So if you want to 
base your assignments around the health industry and then we can discuss those that's that's kind of the way we leave it so yeah to, to do justice to an area as complex as health it would take a lot of time and you know is that as applicable to people who are just you know who are working in retail or something like that so we're we're trying to keep it as as universally applicable as possible but you can specify as well is there any specific approach on pricing models within the business model section? Uh, so yes, Juan, um, we are um, definitely going to go into that. And that's why we have two modules on business models. Uh, there's a lot of detail to go into. Um, we look at how to set pricing in platform business models and that sort of thing as well. And um, eight different approaches that you could take. So yeah, absolutely. We will definitely be looking at pricing um, within the business model section. Uh, Simone, or Simone, depends where, where you're based, so apologies if I've, I've got it wrong, and wondering how much of the student outputs require group work. Um, the assignments on this course are individual, and you do discuss them as a group. Um, we, we just, I think we find that you know, setting up the groups and getting everyone together, it takes a lot of time uh, ahead. And then you've got people in different time zones and you know, lots of things to, to catch up on. And uh, we find it works best within this course because it's such a global group that you work on the assignment individually and then you can give each other feedback and you, know, you can work on it, on it that way. So yeah. And so Dirk asks, is, is this course suitable also for people who currently do not work in a specific company, so work as freelance consultants? Yeah, I've, I've, to be completely candid, I would imagine it's of, of huge benefit, you know, because what we're hoping to, to teach and the, the, the suppose, pedagogical um, philosophy that underpins this is that we're talking about you know, universal trends that are impacting the whole world, touching every aspect of business. So I would have thought as a, as a you know, freelance consultant that would be hugely beneficial because you can apply the knowledge in, in different ways to different industries. So, yeah, just, just be my take on it, but would definitely have thought so. Um, so Augusto asks, um, what are the main papers or books that will you know, support the, the teaching of the course? Um, just, Oh, a bit late, sorry if it was already discussed. Uh, no, it's a good question. We haven't really talked about that too much yet. And um, as I said, we, we will send out a reading list at the beginning of the course, but I don't want to make it seem like you're going to be overburdened with a lot of reading. The reading that we will, will provide is an optional extra. If, if you want to go further into different areas, you can. Everything you need for this course will be within our learning platform. So there will be, for example, if you need to read um, about a certain case study or a certain company, that will be within the platform. We'll have a PDF there or a link to something um, that you can go and see. So um, yeah, no need at all to read textbooks or anything. We'll provide an optional reading list. And the reason we do is because people have requested it and people want that extra detail. But, no need to read anything going into it. We start from the beginning, we have a week of orientation, and then we can, can walk you through things. Um, hmm. So Saeed asks, um, how is it different from the postgraduate diploma in digital business or digital transformation by MIT? So the Postgraduate diploma that Saeed is talking about there is a nine month course and it touches on a few different areas. It has two courses within it from Columbia Business School and one from MIT. So it looks at um, digital strategies for business. So uh, quite a lot looking at um, consumers, um, audience behaviors, and that sort of thing. Then it builds on that with platform strategies, which is really focused, a really detailed look at um, yeah, platform economics, different scenarios where how platforms are, are developed, how they, they grow, um, their life cycle. And then the final section is digital marketing. So yeah, very specifically looking at um, things like Facebook and Google and, and how you can run campaigns. So bringing the knowledge together. You know who your audience is, you know how you want to build your platform or you, know, you want to add a platform. And then finally, how do you reach the audience? How do you, you know, grow, grow that? 
that's a nine month course. It's a diploma. So this is a, a certificate course here. It, it's 10 weeks long. Um, so there are, are big differences. Digital transformation from MIT that you mentioned is the middle part of the diploma. And um, yeah, differs from this in that it is yeah, more, much more of a, a focus on um, things like platform strategies and maybe look a little bit more at you know at specific kind of IT systems and that sort of thing. Whereas this course is yeah, more at the, the kind of business strategy level. Uh, there are notable d distinctions between them. Uh, I should say as well, you know, feel free to reach out to me on uh, on LinkedIn. I've been I've been a course leader for um, pretty much all of these these courses. So if there's anything you want, you just want an opinion on you know, which one is is best or whatever for specific situations, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm always happy to to um, yeah maybe provide a sounding board there. So any content related to disruption within governments as well? Great question, Charles, because we get quite a lot of people asking about that, actually. Um, again, we do talk about, uh, I think we have a couple of examples in there. Uh, we have some great discussions around that within the live webinars with the professors. There are some, uh, the, what I love about that is that there are some amazing examples that we already know about, but the discussion with the group brings up so many different ones that I'd never heard of, uh, as you can imagine, you know, got business leaders from around the world taking the course they know a lot about this stuff so yes we do a little bit but we actually get a lot of the value from the participants as well uh, is there flexibility on the assignment topics if we want to do something other than the suggested says um, simone or simone for some of them, absolutely. It's completely open to you. Choose an industry and, and apply whatever you've learned that week. Um, some of them, of course, if it's about streaming wars, Netflix versus Disney, it's very specific. So it's about 40% very specific and 60% open. Uh, Sarab, uh, so is there any assignments at the end of the course before the certifications? Um, so yeah, I think if I can come back in here. Oh. Save that one for just a moment. I'll, I'll answer your question first. Um, any assessments done at the end of the course? There are assessments throughout um, that you have to complete. Um, there are eight of those. You have to complete six, and you know, for them to be a passable standard. Um, so yeah, there are you know there are I suppose implications. <laughs> there are um, kind of hoops to jump through to get the, the certificate at the end. Um, but yeah, we, we provide a huge amount of detail on, on that for you as well at the beginning. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep moving through. I've got a few more slides here and then I can pause and ask questions, but I wanna make sure we touch on this one. So there are a few different payment options for the course. Number one, pay in full, so the entire program fee of 2,000 US dollars at once. Second one, so paying two installments. So this would be um, the first installment of $1,081 due immediately. And then the final installment of the two US dollars to be paid on the 1st of April. Oh. My apologies, everyone. I accidentally clicked and it, it moved forward. So. My apologies. Um, so the final installments um, due on the 1st of April, 2020. The third option is to pay in three installments. So the first one of 7.98 due immediately, the second installment of 6.51 on the 1st of April, and then the third and final installment also of $651 to be paid, US dollars, I should say, to be paid by the 21st of April, 2020. So yes, let us know any kind of questions um, about anything to do with the, the pricing or the fees. And I've got the um, support team on with me as well. So we're adequately manned to answer any, any kind of questions or concerns that you might have at this stage. And as I said, we will share these slides. And I saw we had a question, will we share the recording? Yes, we will share a recording of this as well, if you want to relive the memories or if you missed something important and hopefully I have covered it. So where do participants tend to um, join us from on this course? You can see that the highest percentage there is in the others section. Um, that tends to be, well, 
actually you can imagine from all around the world, but uh, Brazil and, and Latin America, um, Nigeria, uh, loads of, of really, really interesting places with lots going on. And India as well in the US and you know, differs from cohort to cohort, but these are the, the general trends. The United Kingdom up, up there at 24%, um, South Africa and Australia and Malaysia, at 5% each roughly normally. And Switzerland at about four percent, but yeah, we give you full um, sort of visibility into where people are from. You can reach out to people as well if if you would like to. But um, yeah, pretty diverse global group. And yeah, we had a question about this earlier. So, what sort of experience do people need to take this course? Well, there's no clear answer to that. 34% uh, of participants have between 16 and 20 years experience. So that's you know, the most common, but 20% on 11 to 15, 20% 21 to 25 years. But we also have 5% of people with between one and five years experience and 11% with six to 10 years experience. So it brings about a lot of very interesting discussion, as you can imagine, you know, when you put together the diversity of, of work experience with diverse um, global backgrounds and then add in the different industries that people work in. I'm glad that slide was next. I was hoping it would pop up. So the most, yeah, definitely this has been my experience. You know, consulting, most common, 15%. You know, banking and financial services, about 15%. IT services, 10%. Telecommunications, yeah, 6%. IT products, 6% there. And then 48% is other. So you've got a lot of uh, retail and healthcare professionals and a uh, huge amount of different industries. So, so yeah, very, very interesting backgrounds and opinions that come from that. And um, we find that people are able to take you know, quite universal principles, general principles that we teach, and make them specific within the course and then back in their jobs as well. We will show you kind of who's joining from where within your cohort um, should you choose to sign up to this wonderful course. So I'm going to answer a couple of questions um, here. Uh, we're just about, just about sort of on time. <laughs> yeah. I haven't overrun this time, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> be, be thankful for that. I've got a lot to say about these topics. Uh, but yeah, as I said, anything comes up or you know, just not sure about something, please do reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. I'm, that's normally the quickest way to, to get me. Um, yeah, look up Clark Boyd. There aren't too many of us. Uh, so yeah, we've got a couple of questions about, you know, does this look specifically about things like understanding customers, so you know, the jobs to be done kind of framework for digital transformation. Andy is asking. Yes, absolutely. Now we do go into um, more detail on that in some of the other courses actually. So uh, the digital strategies for business really focuses on those those frameworks. But yes, we definitely do in this course as well. Because it's what we're kind of trying to talk about, isn't it? How do you understand the changes in the market? Of course, you're looking at what your competition's doing, but this is all driven from what's happening with individual lives. You know, how are we capturing data to try and understand those trends and then, then codify them within our business practices? So yes, would be the short answer to that. Um, and yeah, we've got a couple of questions about you know, the specific industries and things. And um, as I would say, things like manufacturing, we, we talk about those in our live sessions and we, we you know, field questions about those. We prepare materials for them, but this is not a specific course for any particular industry. You know, we have examples about uh, travel, healthcare, um, finance, quite a few on finance actually, IT and so on, but we're not specifically you know, focusing on, on one area. So we'll do what we can, but then it's kind of up to the participants to go and apply it because they're, they're the industry experts as much as anything else. And yes, Roberta, so this webinar will be available. We'll share the recording and we will share the slides with you as well. So we will still be available to answer quite a lot more questions from you. And today I want to give you a bit of a snapshot and hopefully whet your appetite a little bit for uh, this upcoming course. And yeah, we will look forward to seeing you at the beginning of the program. Thank you so much for joining everyone. It's been a real pleasure and looking forward to speaking to you very soon again. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.